Hello, welcome back again. This is Fox. Um, that sound you were hearing there, uh, I made a little, well, I made that sound yesterday, in fact. Um, I recorded a little video of it on my phone, put it on my Facebook page. Somebody requested that I show you how I made it. It's very complex. I'm not going to remake this exact sound, but um, I can talk you through the processes of what I've got going on here, mainly using the arpeggiator as an input in the matrix section with this pattern to modulate the wavetable position for both oscillators. These oscillators, when you have them in wavetable mode, um, normally there's about five or six different waves that you can hear. Um, we use that step sequencer to cycle through these different waves um, rhythmically to a pattern at 16 sections or 16 beats, if you like. You, obviously, being an arpeggiator, you can sync it to the clock. You can get those patterns to go how fast you want. Then we've got uh, an LFO set to a sawtooth wave at the same rate, giving us the volume duck. Also, I've got some sidechain compression as well, giving us a bit of a extra pumping feel. So I'm going to go ahead and initialize this. We'll load up a basic wave table. Um, the grain simple ones was what I was using. Let's just pick scale tricks. Might help if I'm on. So. 24 semitones down. The lower these are in pitch, the easier it is to hear the change in the waves and stuff. We give it just oscillator one. You can hear there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different tones this one's called scale tricks so i'll take it there now going up in a scale you can tell there are octaves on this one let's pick something called over bones one two three four five six seven eight there's eight discernible different waves inside the wave table inside this one as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set the arpeggiator to... Scan between these different waves in the wave table rhythmically. So we'll keep one oscillator going first. We'll set the arpeggiator up how we want it. And then we'll add another oscillator, add some effects, bring some sync in. Some other stuff to make it a bit more rhythmical and a bit more musical. So I've just got one note here in a MIDI clip for the virus. It is on D3. You can hear that side chain compression. We'll delete that for now. What else have we got going on? Just some basic EQ and I did put some trash on it as well. We'll turn the side chain compression off. So, arpeggiator, we're going to turn it on, obviously, we're going to set ARP to matrix. That means the arpeggiator now is not controlling pitch, it's not re-triggering any notes or doing any MIDI function. It's just using this arpeggiated, using this step sequencer pattern to modulate things in the matrix section. And what we want it to modulate is, if we set ARP input, that's the destination, uh, the, um, the modulation source, we set it to oscillator one shape index that is the way you scan through the waves it's on full so we've got the full range that the arpe the arpeggiator is going to control all we then have to do is tell it what we how long we want the pattern we want it to be 16 bar 16 beats we want all 16 to be on so we need to highlight highlight them then we'll just go start drawing in some shapes Set it to a bit slower, one over eight. Mm. 
That's a pretty good basic pattern. That's all I did. You can jiggle around with this, do whatever you want. Just remember that the height of these peaks is whereabout in the wave table you're going to go. You could probably pick out some more different sounds if you go. <laughs> So yeah, that is virtually it. As I say, Overbones is not a really brilliant one. Scoutrix is a good one. Let's bring in a second oscillator. A four man simple. Just pick one like pulse checker. Put it down to zero. You need to make sure the wave table is all the way down to zero on the left. Let's switch to this scene actually. You need to make sure the wave table is all the way to the left. Then you've got full control over the travel with the arpeggiated pattern. So we want oscillator two shape index also. See, it's already quite rhythmical. Um, we'll bring the side chain compression in now. I'm just going to pick a real another random waveform for oscillator three. I think I had 63 on for some reason. Gives a bit of a gritty edge. So that's basically how I got the uh, change in like t timbre, if you like, without actually modulating any pitch or anything. We're just moving through the wave table with that arpeggiated pattern. Just cycle through the wave table as it's playing, try and find something that you like. Then what I did is I picked an LFO, I set it to sawtooth made mode, I set the clock to one over eight, which was the same rate at what the arpeggiated imp arpeggiator was running at set the trigger phase to full that means every time a new note is pressed it's going to restart the sawtooth, the sawtooth waveform set this to the filters um, yeah you'll see in a minute Let's turn off the side chain compression So what this is doing is it's bouncing the filter open at a 1 over 8 rate or 8th notes. Let's bring the drums back in. Could 
change the rate, speed it up. Set the LFO to 1 over 16 as well. Take compression back. That is basically it. Use the arpeggiator to modulate the um, wavetable and then the, the world draws. So then just go and dial some effects in. I had a phaser. load the actual patch that I made we can see what else I did so we've got the phaser on the EQ settings that I just did um, I believe I've got a delay tape clocked on number two so yeah we've virtually just made it no unison it sent a smear a little bit so so I must have had it on 16th notes yes yeah, so I did I had it on 16th notes and the LFO on 16th as well got some hard saturation in between the filters two pole going to a two pole So you can set this arpeggiated pattern then to control all manner of things inside this. Uh... Let's set it to control filter cut off two as well, but just a small amount. Delay has a big impact on how the sound is. I mean, you could cancel out every other, make it a bit more simple. Really quite acidy. Changes around. Bring in a valve filter. Set that to be controlled by the app input as well, the filter bank frequency, which is the uh, vowel, if you like, uh, app input. Filter bank frequency. C 
Still got a bit of room in the virus for some other effects. Let's try the phaser again. Yeah, very cool sound. You, you can get some real nice acidy, bubbly rhythms. I mean, let's play around with the LFO. You can use any one of the classic wave shapes as an LFO. If you didn't realise that, you just click and drag it up. Choose the uh, basic waveforms there, or click and drag. Robot stuttery effects with a square wave. Negative, closing that frequency shifter off. Yes, world is your oyster. There you have it. Um, I did do a video on the app to Matrix or using the arpeggio as an input a few months back now, maybe about a year ago. But yes, very, very neat trick. I use it a lot when I'm making the sounds. Um, if I don't want an arpeggiated sound, it is a variable source. It's like having a step sequencer to use as a modulation source. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't, hit me a thumbs down. Join me for the next one. Cheers. Thanks for watching.